didn't tell him nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that why they played it so differently then? I guess. No, you know? they, they played it differently because it was a different time and it was a different situation, and because rediscovering the chemistry or creating that is really an, uh, a, a, about luck. It's it's nothing more than and everything about that. So when you guys were um, going for the role of when you uh, started being hatched, did you guys do some sort of chemistry test? Yes. They have those guys. Right? He, he kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> Love it for his sight. He must have been a good kisser. He is a good kisser. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> and I didn't have to kiss any ass. No, that's not what you had to kiss. No, no. no. And, uh, if you guys had to describe each other's characters then, what would you say about each other? I'm surprised I showed up on the set. <laughs> We were too. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> oh, you were still in the same I was just amazed. Um, you know, you, when you do something like that, you're just doing a job. And I One, was two, just, three. I was just happy to have a job <laughs> and to be with these two guys and watching them do their thing. I was just as enamored with with the opportunity every day to come in and, and, and just have fun and getting paid for something that I love to do. You know? So it's cool. And Huggy was obviously a really popular character. So why do you think he was so popular? Well, you know, I didn't know that. You know, I, I didn't know Huggy was popular. I probably would have asked for more money. and probably wouldn't have gotten it. But, uh, you know, this is after the fact. It's after the fact that I could be sitting here, we could be sitting here 42 years later because of something that we did that was interesting to people. And, uh, and, and and touch the chord. So you know, the rest was sort of like just uh, luck and life and who knows what. Like you're saying, 42 years later, you have lots of fans to show. But what was it like at the time? Was there much of a fan response when the show was on TV? Uh, not initially, not initially. Uh, initially, we didn't even think it was going to go past the uh, island stage. Uh, Sitting in front of the, you and I were standing up in front of the little theater at Fox, and they were screening the pilot. And I turned to you and I said, "Thank God, this isn't going to be a series." Uh-oh. And then, when you were filming, one thing I was wondering is who did the stunts? Did you do them yourself? And who was the best in Boulder when it came to doing the stunts? Uh, that's a very sore question. <laughs> you got to be careful about that. Well, how many stuntmen did you put in the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we each did uh, a lot of our stunts. Now, he really uh, about uh, doing stunts. Is we do, well, number one, we had uh, two very very good teachers uh, who who doubled for us all the time. And they were also taught us a lot of our stunt work. So the idea for a stuntman, for a, a guy who does the stunts, is to take the actor as far into the action as possible and bring him out as soon as possible. In other words, bring him in and do the stunt that's dangerous. And then the actor comes in and comes out as quickly as can, quickly as possible, out of the, out of the action. And that's, and that's what these guys were good at. Finally, it came to the time where we could do a, a lot of our own stunts. And uh, you, know, you live and learn as you go, because you always think you can do more than you can really do. And you pay for it. Is there any particular that comes to mind? Well, there's one scene in the beginning of the, in the pilot where I jump off, a, jump off the wall and I, and I thought to myself in midair, I said, you know, it's so easy to step down on top of that car. I gotta do something. 
so I made a decision in midair. I'm going to land on my ass. <laughs> and I did. And I paid for it, but boy, I did, I did not admit it. That killed me. It looked good. It looked good. great. And they used it, of course, in every episode of Starsky Hutch thereafter, even in the opening segment. But um, that was the kind of stupidity that uh, actors sometimes contrive. And uh, I'm sorry that I did that, but uh, I did. Sorry about that. And, and you didn't just act in the show, though. You both directed as well. So what was it like being behind the camera? That's, that's a hard question. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A lot of work. In the beginning, we didn't have a particularly big cheering crowd for us as directors. They, they, they wanted us to fail. Um, but uh, it was very enjoyable and very educational. David was a David is a, kid, a really good director. You know, likewise you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And I had the experience of being directed by these two guys. Yeah, uh, and in particular, the two shows, of course, uh, in the last season of the show, David directed an episode called Huggy Can't Go Back. And it was one of the most enjoyable experiences I've had on Stars and Hunch because so many elements came together in that episode. And then, of course, Mr. Mr. Glazer directed the last, the last episode show, uh, Sweet Revenge, yeah, Sweet Revenge, and that was also a, a coming together of a lot of things, the resolution as well as the letting go and all these mixed emotions that, uh, you know, that, you know, having the experience of being with these guys for these many, those many years, um, well, in a way it was quite emotional, but the fact is that these guys were too sensitive and caring actors who also have the ability to transport that to actors and directing. My first experience in directing, I'm in directing, my first experience in directing, I wanted to direct very much. It was a thing called survival. And um, it got to the, uh, the, the day, things are going to be easy, you know? And I arrived on set up at the uh, observatory in Griffith Park, at the top of the, looking all over Los Angeles. And there was a crane, and there was an insert car, and there was there was a crew of 70 people. And you look at these guys and say, what the hell am I doing here? Now, there's, a, there's an unwritten law in, in film making. Get the first shot. Get the shot, and then you, you're moving. Okay? And then you can move, just make a second shot, and a third. Now it's got some sort of a rhythm to it. But I, I had not a clue. It's like, what am I going to do? And finally, I just said the simplest thing. Put the camera on sticks and get a car to drive by. Just and that, that was the opening shot. And I got that and I said, wow, that's like gone with the wind. You know? <laughs> then you were behind schedule. Then I was behind schedule at that point. That's the other thing you're always up against in television, or we were then, certainly. And that is, uh, you have limited time, and uh, you got to get a, a, a lot of stuff done in a little, little bit of time. And the Starsky and Hutch was shot in seven, mostly seven days. And, uh, today, today is unheard of. Yeah. Today they take uh, ten days. Yeah. Uh, and the shows now, uh, our show is actually, without the commercials, 48 minutes long. They say it was an hour show, but 48 minutes. Now it's 44. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been in the UK for so long, I don't know how long things are. And 48, it's 44 minutes now. Yeah. Boy, that tells you how commerce, commercials have taken over, you know? Well, they got to pay for it somehow. Well, they can get making money. I feel like we're talking numbers now. And speaking of, you guys made 92 episodes. 
I, I don't know. You'd have to ask, ask them. them. Yeah. Puppy Dr. Thanks, guy. The fix. The fix. You the really fix. love the show that much. <laughs> you love them all. Love them. Right. Everybody talk at once. <laughs> Too shy. But we are going to come around and give you a chance to ask some questions in just a moment. So, just a few questions, stick your hands up and 